macros. This video covers boundary independent macro, surface independent macro, and boundary independent plus use input geometry option. Macros using more than one boundary can be saved as a boundary independent macro. This type of macro is designed to be run from within a second database and applied to an item or items in that file with the relevant folders selected. It should be noted that macros that work over multiple parts require careful planning. The boundaries will be selected by label and therefore they are reliant on the identical naming of the boundary folders used in the source database and the folders created for use in the target database. Default folder names can be used bounding box 1, silhouette boundary 1, 2, 3 etc. If edits are made to the items it may be preferred that the names of the final folders are modified to suit the user's naming convention. If a boundary folder is not found a warning message will be shown and the macro will exit. After the necessary processes have been created in the source database, the macro can be saved from the File drop down menu, Macro, Save As, or by selecting the folders in the Process Manager. Right mouse click and choose Save as Macro. Boundary Independent Macros Open the source database and select a geometry file. Accept or modify the project settings and click OK. Delete any unwanted folders. After the services have been triangulated, select the necessary items and create the boundaries. In this case, one boundary around each of the four pocket areas. For this example, I will separate and rename each of the boundaries so that they can be easily identified. A circle, a square, a triangle and a slot. Let's create a different pass strategy in each of the boundaries. Radial passes in the circle boundary. Area clearance in the square. Constant step over in the triangle. and water line in the slot. Link all the passes and set the cutting parameters. Ultimately the macro can be created for any of the operations from the basic passes up to and including the toolsheet folder. In this example, select the four parameter folders and save the macro. From the file drop down menu, choose Macro, Save As. In the dialog, the display list must be set to an option other than File Open Dialogs Only. In this case, Set it to No Dialogues. Now click the Boundary Independent tick box to be able to apply the saved macro to geometry files with active boundaries and surfaces. Setting this option forces the Surface Independent box to be checked. Uncheck the Prompt for Project Settings as the target database will be opened before the macro is run.
click save. A file described as having active boundaries and surfaces is a second geometry file that has been opened, the surfaces triangulated and the boundaries created. Open the target database with the required input geometry file. Accept or modify the project settings and click OK. Delete any unwanted folders. Create the necessary boundaries and rename them if necessary to suit those names saved in the macro. Select the triangulated surfaces folder. From the file drop down menu, choose macro run. Locate and select the required macro from the open dialog. Click open. Once the operations are complete, inspect the passes. Radial passes using the circle boundary. Area clearance passes using the square. Constant step over using the triangle and waterline passes using the slot boundary. Surface independent macros. Macros that need to act on alternative surface geometry can be saved as a surface independent macro. Again, this type of macro is designed to be run from within a second database. In this prepared database, there are four sets of passes. These are contained by the bounding box for the triangulated surfaces and further controlled by values in the dialogues. Area clearance passes contained by the boundary. Waterline controlled by the passes limit angle value. Waterline controlled by the passes limit angle value. Horizontal passes. The top passes are omitted by setting the passes limit Z max value. The passes have been linked, parameterized, post processed, and a toolsheet created. Select the toolsheet folder and save the macro. From the file, drop down menu, choose Macro, Save As. In the dialog, the display list must be set to an option other than file open dialogues only. If you do not need to edit any of the saved values, set it to no dialogues. A macro that is set to no dialogues will run to the end unattended. If you do need to make edits or want to verify the macro as it is executed, then set it to all dialogues. Click the surface independent tick box to apply the saved macro to geometry files with active surfaces only. This action prevents the original geometry being imported into the new database. Uncheck Prompt for Project Settings as the target database will be opened before the macro is run. Open the target database with the required alternative input geometry file that the macro is going to act on. Ensure that the triangulated surfaces folder is selected. From the file drop down menu, choose macro run. Locate and select the required macro from the open dialog. Click open. A macro set to all dialogues will present each dialog for verification and editing if required. Click OK to execute each operation. Note, as you can see from the process manager, the first operation, bounding box 1, is queued and all others are blocked from running at this time. If your macro includes post-processing, you may get an information message about zero machining time. No intervention is necessary. 
click OK to the message dialog, verify and click OK to the post process once the last dialog in the macro is verified. All the operations are executed. On completion, open the folders to verify and inspect the passes that have been created. Use input geometry option, creation of planar patches and fillets in boundary independent macros. The option use input geometry in the save as macro dialog is an alternative to surface independent. In this example, the macro is primarily boundary independent. Then, by selecting the use input geometry option as well, the macro will be able to create additional planar patches and fillets to aid the machining process. Remember, folder names in both the source and target databases must be identical. Rename this set of surfaces to surfaces 1. Create a triangle and circle boundaries. Use the triangle boundary to create a planar patch part way down the cavity wall. Combine the two boundary folders and rename it Combined 1. Create fillets in the internal corners using the combined boundary folder and the edited triangulated surfaces. Open the combined silhouette boundary folder to gain access to the original boundaries. Select the edited fillet surfaces folder together with the triangle boundary and create a set of constant step over passes. Link the passes. Select the edited fillet surfaces folder together with the circle boundary and create a set of radial passes. Link the passes. From the process manager, select the constant step over and radial toolpath folders. Right mouse click, save as macro. In the dialog, set the display option to no dialogs. Now check the boundary independent and use input geometry tick boxes. Uncheck prompt for project settings as the target database will be opened before the macro is run. Save. Open the target database with the required input geometry file. As an example, translate the part to a new datum. Rename the folder Surfaces 1. Create two boundaries and rename them Triangle and Circle. Combine the folders and rename it Combined 1. As an example, let's edit the Node Dialogs macro. From the file drop down menu, view the Start Macro Paused option. This is a toggle option and stays either off, unticked, or on, ticked. If it is unticked, click on it to activate it. The macro is now set to run with all processes paused. Select the Surfaces 1 folder. From the File drop down menu, choose Macro, Run. Locate and select the required macro from the Open dialog. Click Open. In the Process Manager, you will see that all the folders are created but not calculated. Select any plan you wish to modify. Right mouse click and show its properties. Make the modification and choose OK. The plan and its dependence 
are then updated. Modified plans are highlighted with the system modified color. To complete the operations, right mouse click in the process manager. Untick pause all by clicking on it. Once the operations are complete, make the toolpaths visible to verify them.